All right, I'm Karanda Adair, and I'm going to talk to you about starting your own business um, and why I decided to start my own business and sort of how that journey has come to be. Um, I'm a big believer that the best time to teach something is right after you do it. Um, so I started my business 18 months ago, so that's a pretty young business. Um, so that was one of my motivations. Um, so there's a few disclaimers. One is that I'm not a lawyer, um, that I don't have a business degree, so take everything uh, with a grain of, of salt. I'm gonna talk to you mainly from my own experiences. Um, that I don't think people with jobs are suckers. Um, there's, there's a certain kind of entrepreneur that are like, are you a business owner or are you a sucker? Um, I, I'm not one of those. I think people with jobs probably wanna eat and pay their bills, and that's great. Um, and I don't have all the answers, so I'm going to try to leave time uh, at the end for discussion. And also, um, if you want to have a larger discussion, maybe we can unconference about this on Friday. Um, so why I wrote this talk, how this talk came to be, is I was thinking about these issues, um, and I floated this, the title of this talk uh, in IRC to a bunch of my women uh, developer friends. And I said, what do, you, what do you think about this? And they all said, oh, that hits us right in the feels. Um, and uh, companies like to talk about the pipeline problem. Um, it's kind of accepted uh, in tech now in a lot of circles that, oh, yeah, there is a problem. Things are kind of homogenous. Um, what are we going to do about that? We need to get more girls into the pipeline. It's always girls. Um, and what, they, what companies like to talk less about is where the pipeline leads. Um, <clears throat> so uh, they like to talk about, you know, we got to get girls, but they don't like to talk about what happens to women uh, and other marginalized people when we actually get into the industry. And this is something that I kind of started thinking about um, about halfway through school. Uh, it kind of dawned on me like, oh, wait a minute, I'm going into this field. It's super male dominated. It's super white. Um, what is my day to day life going to be like um, when I go to work every day? So it's something that um, I started thinking about. And uh, I got an actual four year degree. So that's a lot of time and effort and expense and uh, just to leave an industry in four or five years from burnout. So these are things that I think about. Um, so kind of my um, journey into tech is that I, I literally had a meeting with a developer. Um, I was a project manager at a super tiny little um, marketing company. And I had a meeting with our developer and he kind of skipped in uh, with his laptop and we had our meeting and he skipped out. He wasn't literally skipping, but that's like I, how I like to remember it. Um, and I thought, oh. I bet that guy is making three times what I'm making, and he doesn't have to like be in this office. He's probably working from home or some coffee shop. Like that's the lifestyle that I want. So at that point, literally at that point, I went back to my desk and I um, went to PCC, uh, the local community college site, uh, and started getting information on going back to school. So I went back to school. I ended up at the Art Institute of Portland, um, and they required you to do an internship. So I got an internship um, while I was still in school. And then I graduated in the fall of 2011 and was hired on uh, at the agency that I interned at. So things were kind of moving according to plan. I always kind of had long term in my head, like, okay, I want that, that freelance lifestyle. Um, but, you know, I also planned, like, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to work in an agency, I'm going to get experience, um, it's going to be great. So um, about a year after I had been at that company, a year and a half, um, I actually got a promotion and I got a raise and <clears throat> I was getting all this um, praise and then about a month after that um, I got the call into the office and the boss said um, today's your last day and uh, you know it's nothing that you did it's just a bad culture fit and we're moving away from work-life balance and towards career advan advancement um, which to me means if you don't want to work 80 hours a week for a salary then you got to go um, and this statement, like, the thing that blows me away about this, the, the closest thing I have to childhood trauma is that my mom put me to bed uh, before dark in the summertime when I was really young. And I'd lay in bed and I would see other kids playing outside. <laughs> and, and that just, like, stuck with me. And I, I never let her live it down. And my mom's been dead for, like, seven years. And I still talk about this, right? So that's kind of how I feel about this statement. I'm like, I, I still can't quite believe someone would say this. <laughs> um, 
And so, you know, there's a lot of people that are working to kind of fix, you know, the workplace culture problem, um, the company culture problem. But what about right now? Like, what about the people who are stuck in those environments right now, like sacrificing their mental health? Um, uh, what, there's got to be something between, you know, working for the man, if you will, and leaving tech altogether. So what happened after that? Um, I took the walk of shame. You know, I, I, I sent the uh, nice working with you email to all my coworkers. Uh, and I left and I texted my wife and I said, oh, honey, I got fired. And, you know, she was at work. And she came home and she had a Reese's peanut butter cup and a condolence card. I know. And, <laughs> and she's like, honey, are you okay? And, you know, it was several hours between when I got home and when she got home. So she asked, you know, oh, are you, are you doing okay? And I was like, I'm great. I feel amazing. I don't have to go back there. <laughs> and it was literally the space of like three or four hours between just being really pissed off and just being really happy and grateful. And I actually ran into a friend of mine yesterday at the grocery store. And I was like, hey, what's up? What's new? I hadn't seen her in a while. She's like, I quit my job. And she had the same ecstatic look on her face <laughs> that I probably had then of like, I don't have to suffer through this toxic environment anymore. Um, and so I just kind of took that as a sign from the universe that this thing that I had had in my head of like, I'm going to live the freelance dream, that like it was time to do that. Um, so I took some time off. We remodeled our, our living room. Um, so that worked out really well. And then in January 2013, um, I started a business. So here are some of the, the reasons why I started a business, why you might want to start one. Um, one is security. So getting a paycheck every month or every two weeks, like that seems really secure to, to most people, right? But especially in Oregon, which is an at-will employment state, meaning they can fire you for whatever, they don't really need a reason, um, your security is at the whim of your employer, right? You can, you can get the call <laughs> uh, to the office anytime and get your walking papers. So um, what having your own business allows you to do is diversify your income because now you can have a direct re relationship with your clients or your customers that are you're selling that product to. And the concept of the long tail um, kind of says, because it's so much easier now than it used to be to like, get excited and make something and then uh, distribute that something to people directly, um, you don't have to be a conglomerate. Um, so you don't have to have like a million people like your thing in order to be in order to be successful. You could have like a thousand really ardent fans, and then like a few thousand more people who just like what you do. And once you get that loyalty, then whatever you do, like your audience will buy. And so that that kind of makes it more accessible um, to regular people. So that could apply to you know in my case web development, or it could apply to you know, uh, video production, like things are just so much more accessible now. Um, so uh, this is from the author of the book, The Long Tail. In an era without the constraints of physical shelf space and other bottlenecks of distribution, narrowly targeted goods and services can be as economically attractive as mainstream fare. So it basically means you can like find your people and find your niche um, and that can be your audience and that um, can be the people who support you. So uh, one of the other big things is flexibility. So um, the, the darker colored uh, brown things, that's my wife's work schedule. She's a nurse. So um, she works every other weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and she has every other weekend off. And then she works you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and she has these days off in the middle. And these are the days that we would have off together when I had a nine to five job. So four days a month. So as a result of starting my own business, now I get to say, oh, I'm gonna take these three days off and I'm just gonna work when she works. And so we get to spend time together and manage our lives. Like, who's gonna do the laundry? Who's gonna <laughs> when are we gonna see each other? Um, so that's really nice. Um, of course, the flip side of that is, you know, my, my schedule's flexible, so I end up doing 
a lot of house things, a lot of, you know, like I end up flexing a lot even when I don't want to necessarily because life happens and things have to happen. Um, we just moved, we can't not pack up the house and move our things. So, um, so that's a challenge. Um, one of the things I really like is freedom. I said to one of my old teachers, uh, nobody tells you about the free in freelance and how good it is. <laughs> like, you can be stressed out, you can not know where your next client is, but nobody can tell you what to do. <laughs> and that is amazing. So I can put things like this in my Twitter bio and be like, this is it, this is me, like take it or leave it. Um, imagine putting that like on your bio on your employee page. <laughs> It's probably not gonna go over um, in a lot of circles. Um, another great thing about going on your own is growth. Um, as a business owner, you're gonna have to figure out a bunch of things, like everything is on you, right? So um, if you're not good at web stuff, then you gotta figure out web stuff or find somebody who is good at it. Um, if you're not good about finances or taxes or whatever, like you have to learn at least enough about the things you don't know to deal with it somehow. And I find that to be stimulating, to have like new challenges all the time. Some people, that would be terrible and, you know. Um, and, but the other thing is that I get to say yes to so many more opportunities. And when I worked at that agency, my boss was always honest, like, oh, we want you to speak at conferences and we want you to do all these things to promote the company. And I didn't do any of that stuff because I was burnt out and depressed and unhappy and um, didn't have the time. So two years ago at OS Bridge, I was sneaking out of the office seven blocks away to try to like come to sessions because I had gotten a, I had won a free ticket. Um, and originally they're like, oh yeah, you can totally go. And then I was like, oh no, you really, you, we need you here. So I went from that to speaking at my very first conference, which was here one year ago. I gave a talk about um, empathy and tech. And these are some of the things that I've gotten to um, speak at and say yes to just in the past year. Um, Ignite Talk, uh, spoken at the um, WordPress meetup. I went to San Francisco, the first ever lesbians who tech, and spoke to a room full of 800 uh, queer women and people who love them. Uh, I spoke at the um, annual Urban Summit to a room of largely entrepreneurs of color. Um, I'm going up to WordCamp Seattle uh, Friday. I'm leaving OS Bridge to take the train to Seattle to go speak up there. Um, and then uh, next month I'm going to, uh, or on August, I'm going to Madison Ruby. Uh, and next month I'm going to the White House for a tech summit on LGBT um, issues. So those are things that, <laughs> those are things that I all get to say yes to because I don't have to have the overhead of, Oh, can I get time off? Oh, I gotta ask my boss. Um, you know, hey boss, can I go speak to a bunch of lesbians? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, that might go over well for some people, not so well for others. Um, so that's like one of the great things. And then for me, one of the most important things is my mental health has skyrocketed. Um, so <laughs> uh, there's a great book by Baratunde Day Thurston called How to Be Black, and in it there's a chapter on uh, how to be the black employee. And kind of what he's referring to is that like, if I agree to work for a company um, where inevitably, especially in Portland, I'm gonna be the only blank, right? One of the only women, the only the black person, uh, the only lesbian, what have you, then I'm actually taking on a second job. And the second job is just being the other and dealing with uh, daily microaggressions that happen even when you know people don't mean them and uh, if you don't know a microaggression is uh, kind of the everyday slights and dignities put downs and validations that uh, marginalized people experience in their day-to-day -day life uh, with well-intentioned well-meaning people who are unaware that they have even done anything wrong or anything hurtful um, so that can look like you know the, uh, the women in a meeting always being asked to take the notes. Um, it can look like my coworker who was super excited to tell me um, about how he was going in blackface for Halloween. Uh, <laughs> and you know, these are people that in some cases I liked and respected, but like those are the things that you have to deal with. So, you know, having my own business, I get to work from home, I don't have to put up with, 
you know, rooms full of dude bros who are walking all over me and just think I'm there to serve their every whim. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. So, okay, that's not quite true. I still, I still deal with entitlement, but they're so, <laughs> they're so tiny and so cute that somehow I just, I don't mind. Um, so if this is so amazing and great, like why, why doesn't everybody do it? Um, well, obviously there's the other side of the coin. There's some challenges, right? So what are some of the things that might stop you from going out on your own? Money. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily take a lot of money to start a business, uh, depending on what you're doing, but you don't know if that business is going to succeed and you probably want to keep eating in the meantime. So, um, you probably want to have some savings or, um, a supportive spouse or something like that. So that can be a big barrier for people. Um, I have a friend whose life that I have been threatening to steal for um, several years now because she, she literally wrote down that she wanted to be paid to travel around the world and have adventures and write about it. And she's a freelance writer and she's a photographer, um, but she's not someone who came from money or you know had a lot of advantages growing up. And in fact, she's supported her family from the time she went to college. So, you know, for her, she literally spent two years working 70 to 80 hours a week um, to get the cushion that she felt she needed before she could kind of make the leap and, and do her own thing. So it's not, you know, it's not always easy. Um, I'm extremely fortunate to have a very supportive partner with a very steady job um, who, you know, saw how happy I was the instant I got fired and said, yes, you should start your own business. Um, <laughs> Healthcare is another one, especially for um, us uh, in the U.S., where our healthcare is tied to our jobs, which is totally idiotic. But um, uh, so, health insurance, like, what are you going to do about that? Um, Obamacare is probably helped with that, but that's not that's not a golden ticket for everyone. Um, so, it's nice if you're lucky enough to either be able to afford that on your own, or again, I'm super super lucky to have a partner who can provide health insurance for us both. Um, caregiving, maybe you're the sole breadwinner in your family and so you are stressed out about like if this doesn't work like how am I going to feed my kids or um, so that's something that you have to take in, into account. Um, time is a big factor. Uh, if you've already got a job and you don't want to make a leap, maybe you want to try to start something on the side and let that grow but you also like sleep <laughs> or spending time with your family so you gotta um, try to figure out you know, how are you going to manage your time? Um, one of the things that I've really uh, had hit home in the 18 months I've been doing this is that actually the less time I have, the more I get done. So don't discount the value of being busy. Um, I revamped my entire website about two weeks ago, right before we packed to move. <laughs> um, so I just, I literally was getting up at three in the morning um, some days because that was the time I had, and I, I really felt strongly that I, I have to get this done. So sometimes those are my best productive times. Um, maybe you've got like a non-compete or a conflict of interest clause at your work that means you know you can't use any of your any of the things that you make or create at work. Um, so that can be a barrier. So maybe that means oh okay I have to like finish this thing and make a complete break. So then you're back to you know are you going to save money? Are you going to you know make a cushion. Um, and then of course there's what I call the golden handcuffs, which is like the paychecks are nice. Like I don't, um, there's nothing wrong with getting like a fat wad of cash every couple weeks or every month. So um, had I not got fired, I'm not sure how long it would have taken me to actually uh, quit and start a business. So pain pleasure principle applies, right? Um, sometimes you have to have the universe like give you the boot. Um, and then, of course, just plain old fear, like, what if, what if, what if, what if this doesn't work? Um, what if I don't know what I'm doing? Um, all, so those are all, like, very real um, barriers. So let's talk about what, you, what can you do to combat some of those things. Um, <clears throat> so you want to make a plan, right? You've got an idea, but you really want to make a solid business plan, and you want that to be written down. Um, and that's going to do a couple of things for you. One, it's going to 
help clarify your thoughts. It's going to put it in a form that you can show to other people if you want to get feedback about, hey, um, do you think this is a viable idea? Um, there's a lot of programs that you can apply for. Um, and probably the first thing they're going to ask you is, where's your business plan? So that's the first thing. Um, I kind of talked about this already, but um, saving, saving up so that you have you know, three or six months or a year of expenses or what, whatever makes you feel comfortable um, making that leap. Um, and I've uh, really enjoyed using Simple. Um, for uh, Simple is kind of a bank, internet bank replacement type of thing that it makes it easy for me to save because it just siphons, quietly siphons away money <laughs> while I'm not looking. I can say, hey, I've got a goal to have like, you know, this much money saved for whatever by this date, and then it'll just quietly kind of like shift the money away from me. Um, so that's nice. Um, you want to get support from your network. That could be your partner, it could be um, your family, it could be your friends. Um, you know, tell them. You know, if you're like strung out and sort of uh, at the end of your rope in your job, you can sit down and say, look, I, I really have to make this change. Like, I need support and help to do that. And you'd be surprised that, you know, people that will go out of their way to, to help you out. Um, you might be able to go part time. Like, maybe you can do your job part time and do your business part time. Um, really, that depends on kind of where you're working and, and what you do. Um, there's business loans. Um, I didn't have to go that route because honestly all I needed to start my business was my laptop. Um, <clears throat> but that's a, a totally viable idea. Um, I haven't done this, but individual development accounts are um, basically matching savings programs. So you can get into a program that says, oh, if you save $2,000 or $3,000, then we'll match that by 50% and then you have to spend it on your business in some way. Um, so those are available and out there. I haven't um, tried to do one yet. Um, so other things you can do um, is to kind of change who you're hanging out with, right? If you're at your job, um, probably the, your coworkers and the people who want to keep their jobs aren't going to be the most helpful people to help you get out of your job. So start hanging out with other entrepreneurs. Um, start reading uh, books by entrepreneurs. Start listening to podcasts. Just um, who you hang around with has a huge influence on sort of where you end up. So hang out with people who are where you want to be and start absorbing um, what they're doing uh, and picking their brains. Um, now on that note, um, just a, a word about the coffee date. Uh, I seem to have reached a point now where I'm getting like emails from strangers who are like, hey, I'd love to have coffee with you and pick your brain. But now I'm busy. <laughs> and now I'm super aware that like all my time is money. <laughs> like that's when you become like people say that all the time. But when you go into business for yourself, you're like, oh wait, time really is money. Um, so if you're going to do that, I suggest that you you have some sort of relationship with that person where they're they're going to be inclined to want to do that for you because they love you, or um, bring something to the table. Um, so you know, figure out like how you can help them or offer money. Money works great as an incentive for um, people giving you their time. Um, so a couple of media um, tips, and I actually uh, stole these two books from the ADA initiative uh, session that we had on Sunday. Um, the Lean Startup was highly recommended and 168 hours um, about just kind of figuring out where your time goes. Um, and how to make sure that your time is going towards things that help you um, achieve your long-term goals. And the Quit podcast actually started up, I think, shortly after I got fired. Um, and it's a great podcast. They interview tons of people every week who have um, quit their jobs, started up businesses, all kinds of different businesses. So you can just listen to um, how people did it and what their insecurities were and what their challenges were. Um, and that was a great podcast that I listened to for a while. Um, BidSketch is one of the services that I use for proposals, and they actually have a really amazing blog about marketing. Um, so they have just tons of free advice about how to market your business, and I've learned a ton from them. Um, so you want to come out. You want to like tell people what you want to do um, or what you're going to do, and that does some great things. One is that um, when you start 
talking out loud about what you want to do, the universe kind of comes in to help you out because now you're saying it, you're making it real, um, and people can't help you if they don't know what you want to do. So um, as soon as you start talking about <clears throat> what it is, like you're gonna, people will start to think, you know, oh, so and so said they were gonna um, start up that bakery. Let me, you know, let me connect her with like my friend who's having a wedding. Um, but they can't do that if you don't say <laughs> what out loud what you're gonna do. Um, so that's a huge, huge thing. Um, so I've got a few minutes. Um, I want to talk about just some like baseline practical things. Um, like how the heck do you even really start a business? Um, it's deceptively simple, at least for Oregon. Um, you go to the central business registry and uh, fill out the little form, give them your business name, pay them a hundred bucks, and you're officially a business as far as the state of Oregon is concerned. Um, so, you know, your mileage is going to vary from state to state and country to country, but I was, uh, I was kind of surprised how simple it was. It's like, hey, I've got an LLC. It took me 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 um, so obviously there's more to it than that. You need to start learning about things like financial management. Um, you know, when I did my taxes before, it was like, buy TurboTax, fill it out, done. Um, you know, so as a business owner, you are going to have uh, write-offs from different kinds of things. Um, I knew that I didn't want to spend the time to learn all about that, so I found a tax accountant. Um, and actually, when you do this, when you find people to work for you, make sure they're the right people. So I started out with someone who probably was a really amazing tax accountant, but uh, when it was time for me to give them my information, they sent me uh, a big packet of paper in the mail. <laughs> and I was like, paper? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> um, so I went, um, I went out and I found somebody who was a little more 21st century digitally oriented um, that matched my needs. Because I wanted to be able to send a file to somebody with all the information and then have them spit back taxes at me and be done. And that's, that's what I got. Um, get a lawyer. Um, you know, you're going to have legal issues at some point. It's better to get a lawyer sooner than later. Um, you really, really want to have a contract. Um, if you're doing, you know, client-based services type of things, you're going to want a contract. Um, Docracy is a great site that has open sourced legal contracts. So again, this is where the not a lawyer disclaimer comes in, but um, I, that's where I got my contract. It's called the contract killer. Um, it's called that because it's written in really accessible plain language. Um, and I, my clients have never had a problem with it. Um, all right, so here's my uh, things that I've learned in the past 18 months. Um, focus on your strengths and outsource your weaknesses. So I don't want to do tax stuff. Um, what else don't I want to do? Um, I still write proposals, but I have proposal software where I have templates, basically, that I piece together um, so that I only have to write the bits that apply to that certain client. So that reduces my time doing that. Um, so I'm a big believer in sort of streamlining and automating uh, all the parts that I can so that I can focus on the things that are unique to what I can actually bring um, value to my clients. Um, don't be afraid to fire your bad clients. Um, the first client I got was someone that I met at a WordPress meetup. And I knew when I said yes to her that I was going to fire her as soon as I could financially manage it. Um, so you're going to take those <laughs> jobs and those clients um, in the beginning because you're trying to get started, you're trying to build a portfolio, you're trying to make money. Just um, kind of know in your head and plan ahead that those are your stepping stone clients and you want to move beyond them um, as soon as you possibly can. Uh, Plan to start charging more as soon as possible. Um, I don't really talk to anybody who doesn't say like, oh yeah, I started out just charging like, you know, 40 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, whatever. Um, and now you're a business owner, so you are paying your own taxes. Um, you've got to account for all your overhead, all the software you use, um, all the administrative time that you spend doing things that aren't the thing that make you money. So. As soon as you can manage it, um, raise your rates. <laughs> um, 
as far as like getting people to actually pay you money to do things, um, try to focus less on like, oh, I need clients, I need clients, and, and figure out like, who can I help? Because that's why people pay you, right? To solve their problems. So if you focus on, okay, I see this problem, and here's how I can solve it for you, and here's how your life or your business is gonna be better after that, that's uh, a really great way to get clients. Um, be you. Um, a lot of times um, in business, you might think, oh, I'm, I'm in business now, so I have to like, I have to be like chill, I have to be bland, I have to like attract the most people. Um, it's actually way better to just do you. And the right people that you wanna attract will come to you and the wrong people will go away. Um, and I had, <laughs> I had really great confirmation of this um, because I got into a Twitter fight a few weeks ago and, uh, and then I got an inquiry on my website and it's how did you find me and they said oh I saw you had this Twitter fight and you wrote this angry blog post and I loved it and so I <laughs> so just be you um, that's the great thing about your business is that you get to infuse it with your values and not be dictated to you by someone else um, on what's important to you um, and then the most important thing I think to remember is that um, nobody really knows what they're doing. Most people are just kind of winging it and they're faking it and they're learning as they go. And I, you know, I just realized this talking to people, you know, we had people come in uh, and talk to my classes when I was still in school and like people just figure things out as they go. And as long as you are trying to help people and you're you you know you're gonna make mistakes and as long as you're, you fix those, like it's, it's gonna be okay. Um, so that's what I have and um, thank you so much. Um, I did put in the session notes, um, I've got a references slide back here. So I put all those links in the session notes on the OS Bridge site for this talk. Um, so and I think we have a few minutes for questions. So how long did it take uh, all the before you got to the point where you were self-sustaining? Um, probably about six months. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to say that's um, really awesome is that in Oregon, there's something called self-employment assistance. So I got fired, so I applied for unemployment. And when you're on unemployment, you can apply for self-employment assistance and that basically means we'll give you your unemployment and you can spend all your time working on your business. So you still get your exact same amount of unemployment. You get it for the same length of time that you would. You don't have to do the bullshit job search that you're hoping doesn't really work. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then if you make money with your business, you don't have to give back your unemployment. It's just straight up cushion. So I had that for six months and that totally got me through. Yeah. I'm curious, what's your business? <laughs> what's well, my business? Um, I'm, uh, I do WordPress consulting and web development. So basically um, I help people make their online presence awesome so that um, it helps them make more money. Who's your target audience? What are you, most of your companies are small businesses or are you big for? Yeah, it's usually solopreneurs, um, small to medium businesses, um, some nonprofits. Um, people tend to um, come to me who have some sort of social justice bent. Um, so I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing something for someone who does civil rights tours um, is a project I'm in the middle of. Um, I just put up a site for a nonprofit in DC um, that gives books to prisoners, people who are incar incarcerated and they run a book club. Um, so I get a lot of those and that's great because that, that kind of aligns with my core values as well. So that I, literally by creating a better site for them, I'm helping them reach more people and get more donations and stuff like that. It does, but you just want to be balanced about it, right? Because they don't really, nobody really cares if you're desperate for your next client. Like, they care about how you can help them. So 
even if you are, um, the way to attract those people is to be helpful um, and to show people like, here's how what I do can help you. Because really, like, we're all thinking about ourselves, right? <laughs> like, we want to know, like, why should I pay for this? Like, what, what value is it going to bring to me? So it's not that you don't care about your own needs. It's like how you express that or whether you express that uh, and in what, what context. Mm -hmm. so like, is that just the red flag walk away, or do you have ways to kind of make it massage that information into somebody and make sure you get that? Yeah, um, and I just got this. Um, I just, Lindsay laughed at me, but I, I, went, I watched a webinar about this very thing. Um, <laughs> so it really works well to ground what you're charging people in what the value is for them. So, um, so that involves finding out, like, about their business, right? You need to know what they do and who their audience is and what a customer is worth to them. And then you can say, okay, so, and, and you wanna frame it as an investment, right? Cause you know, people sort of have in their mind, like what's this gonna cost me? Well, if you reframe it as, if you invest, you know, this in your business, here's what all it will give you and here's what the return on that will be. Um, and there's times when it doesn't financially make sense for someone to hire me, maybe, because it's too expensive. And so I'm, I don't want to work for those people. Um, you know, I might say, oh, you know, go to WordPress.com and get, you know, get a site and get started or whatever. Or, you know, I might say, hey, why don't I just do, you know, a consulting thing for you to point you in the right direction? Because a lot of times um, what I've been seeing in the last few months is that people don't know they know their core business, but they don't know really about the web or how the web can help them. And so they'll hire someone who makes something that doesn't really fit their needs. And so I just actually had someone come to me who was like, hey, we just, you know, we just went through a redesign, and, but we need you know, this and this and this fixed. And then I got under the hood and I was like, yeah, this looks pretty, but it's kind of a disaster under the hood. And, you know, you need this and this and this. And basically, it would have cost them the same for me to fix it like underneath to do what they really needed in terms of SEO and, and their, you know, their marketing goals um, as what they paid to make it look pretty. And so I'm trying, that's why I'm sort of trying to switch my focus to like, OK, let me help you in the beginning when you're like, hey, what, how do I even do this? And like how, and I, I want to do more writing about like, how do you get a good web, web developer? And how do you tell? you know, that that person can really help you. Um, so, but yeah, grounding it in, you know, a, as an investment, basically. Um, my big goal in life right now is to never have a job again. Um, never is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can't promise that that'll never change, but I really didn't think of it as, oh, I'm going to give this six months and then I'm going to get a job. I just, because for, for me, it's just so, the thought of going back is just so terrible. <laughs> and that's kind of harsh to say, but, um, you know, because there's a lot of good workplaces out there. But just for me in my particular situation, I'm kind of like uh, all or nothing. And I do have a sugar mama, so that makes it, um, easier, but um, but I really didn't. I mean, that's a perfectly valid thing to say. Like to say, I'm going to give this, you know, six months or a year, and if I haven't made X amount of money or it's not working out, I'm going to go get a job, and that's totally fine to do. Like I didn't go into it um, with that. I just and and even when I wasn't quite making like, you know, I just got started. I wasn't quite making what I would call like replacing my salary and everything. I saw enough to know that like, hey, people need my skills and I just have to find them. Um, and so it's totally, like it's totally feasible. There's no reason, and especially like I'm just a solopreneur. So my business is like me doing things directly for people. Um, so I don't have the stress of like employees and trying to support other people, um, which, you know, if you, wanna, if you wanna build up to that, like that's great, but 
it's enough stress for me, like just kind of having the uncertainty and, and building a business that I just try to keep it simple. Yeah. Oh, okay. Five minutes. Um, any more questions? Um, not really. I worked at an agency that was primarily um, doing Drupal development, and I really knew that I didn't want to do Drupal anymore, yeah. and that I liked WordPress and wanted to go back to WordPress. Um, WordPress has a pretty good community. Um, I like the software. I've always had my own sites in WordPress, and I think it's really more accessible for clients and the types of clients that I work with. Like, I, I would never inflict Drupal's sort of back end um, stuff on most of my clients are, are pretty non-technical. So um, one of the the last site that I launched was like a Drupal to WordPress conversion. And um, and and to what you were saying about value, um, my last client said, "Oh my God, the the call button is worth a thousand dollars alone. Like just because I made his, you know, I made his site mobile and I made his phone number a link because it's a bike shop and people are out and about and they need to be able to call. So like." You know, that for him was like, wow, like people who are out and about can now like call us and be like, hey, I've got a flag. Can I come change it or whatever? So, um, so that's something about the value. Yeah. Uh, um, how important do you specialization? Um, specialization is really good. Like, and I'm still struggling with it. Like, I feel like I could be even more specialized. I just haven't quite figured out that niche, but what it does is that um, it allows you to build your reputation as like the instant people need whatever you do, you are the go-to person in their mind. Um, and that's how you get referrals and, and build something, you know, big. I don't have any employees. Unless you count the cats. <laughs> um, I don't plan to at this point. Um, oh, sorry. So she was asking me if it's, if it's just me or if I have employees and if I plan to have employees, right? Um, so it's just me. Um, and at this point, I don't plan to. But, you know, that, that could change. I kind of like the idea of just keeping things simple. But I also know that at some point, um, if your business gets big enough, then you can become sort of the blocker to growth, um, you know, because you're doing everything yourself. So it's not inconceivable that that would happen. But I also know people who've just been doing this for 10 years or more and that they just, you know, like, and that uh, one of the things that kind of bugs me about like startup culture is this idea that the only way to start a business is to like, make an app or do something that, you know, is going to get bought by Facebook so you can have a million dollars. Like, you can make a fine living on your own, like, doing things for people that they value. Uh, and and it can, that's fine. Like, you can do that as a lifestyle, and that's fine. Like, and I think, you know, starting a business and having employees and getting an office and, like, that's, that's adding on a lot of stress that I'm not sure I want in my lifestyle, so... Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of one of those people who would rather get together with someone else yeah. and approach with people. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm always wondering, how the heck do you get to the point where you can invite people? Well, you can, you can search for a co-founder, right? You can just start talking about what you want to do and say, I'm looking for a co-founder. I've, I've had people come up to me at meetups and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. If there's, if there's a local co-working space, like if, you, if, you're just, if there is one in your town, you're just starting out on your own, just going, and like sometimes you can rent a desk for 100 or $200 a month, and then you're, then you're around other people. So I've seen basically small businesses oh, yeah. start up, and then sometimes they, they fall, you know, they dissolve, but then yeah. been like, these limited partnerships will form around projects with mm -hmm. people that have complementary skills. So yeah, and I have a part-time office that's a co-working space, and I have an informal co-work 
group that we just tweet like, hey, we're going to go to this coffee shop this week because I do like to get out and still see people and stuff. And yes. Co-founders is like a limited partnership for a project. Like, if you have programming skills, but someone else has the design skills, you can just be like, "Hey, I have this project. Can you like do that?" And then like you, you can talk to a client and like you both send them the bill. Yeah, and I've done that actually. Like, I whenever I need design because I don't I don't do visual design, so I've partnered with designers where like they do their part and I do my part, and we have separate contracts with the client. Oh, the last one. Cool. We're out of time. Thank you so much for coming.